Good evening. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, this virtual open evening is um, designed for those people who are just starting on their journey of um, looking into uh, suitable schools for their child's senior education. So this is an ideal opportunity to introduce you to the Pangbourne community. Um, I'll talk you through the agenda for this evening in just a moment, um, but before I do, I just wanted to explain that um, here at Pangbourne, we tend to follow the tradition naming for school years. So um, those in Form 3 are Year 9 entry, uh, Form 4 is Year 10 and so on and so forth. So you will hear us talking about Form 3 and third form this evening. We are, of course, referring to children in uh, joining us in Year 9. <clears throat> so, uh, we'll shortly hand over to uh, our headmaster, Mr. Thomas Garnier, um, who will give you a short welcome. Um, we're then going to hand over to um, Mr. Cheney, our head of boarding, and then Mrs. Jones, who's the house mistress of St. George. And both are going to um, give you a, a virtual tour um, of their boarding houses or divisions, as, as we call them. Uh, we'll then go across to Mr. Follett, who's currently in the chapel, um, who'll be talking about the academic subjects available and progression into GCSE. We'll then hand to Mr. Hewick, our Director of Sport, uh, who's joined by uh, Ms. Sanders, who is the um, Head of Girls Sport. We'll then have a look at a pre-recorded video that's been filmed by a couple of our students. And then we'll be going back to Mr. Jeannie, who will be having a chat with one of our parents, who's kindly uh, agreed to join us this evening. We then have another video introducing you to our creative curriculum uh, heads of department. And then uh, Mrs. Pointer, head of Key Stage 4, will be talking to um, a couple of our pupils about their experiences of being in Form 3. We'll then hand over to Mrs. Bailey, who uh, joined us very recently as head of admissions, who will talk you through the admissions process and next steps. And then we'll go on to the Q&A session. Um, and everyone's happy to stay as long as necessary to make sure we cover off all of your questions. I would ask you to use the Q&A function, which is at the bottom of your screen, um, to put your questions forward. Um, you may find that as the evening goes on, uh, you, you may see a response to that. Um, but as I say, we will keep the majority of those questions until the end of the evening. And I have had a couple of questions coming from parents actually in advance, which is wonderful. Thank you. So then I shall hand over to um, Mr. Garnier, our headmaster. Well, good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to this virtual open evening uh, at Pangbourne. I want to thank you very much for your interest in the college. And as you see, you're going to meet a number of our, our staff tonight. Uh, we hope this event will be very helpful to you as you try to work out what is the best choice for your son and daughter for the next uh, few years in secondary education. And, and of course, you, you, you do have a choice because there are lots of schools, uh, all different in terms of their, their character, their size, the curriculum they offer. Um, so there's, there's lots of choice uh, that each school is unique, just as your children are, are unique. Uh, and uh, it's very important to try and get the right fit. Uh, generally, in the process of trying to find a school, there are, there are three main phases. There's the, the fact finding phase, which uh, I believe most of you are at, and I, I'll, I'll probably make that assumption. Uh, the second phase is the opportunity to visit schools. It's really important you do that so that you can see the place and you can perhaps more importantly meet the people uh, and have conversations and, and have the opportunity to uh, really test whether what is said in all this glossy literature, which we all spend thousands of pounds on, um, is really the case. And, and importantly, get a, get a feel for the school and gut feel is, is really important. And then the third, third phase is, is pulling that all together, all those impressions, both written and visual and, and what's, uh, what's been said to you, uh, and try to work out um, which school uh, will be the one at which your son or daughter will thrive. We want to help you in that process. It's very important to us that the children end up at the school that is right for them. Uh, and it might not be Pangborn, but we hope for many of you it will be. So just to move on to some basic facts uh, by way of scene, scene setting, uh, Pangborn is a, is a relatively small independent school, uh, 455 pupils aged between 11 and 18. Uh, it's a co-educational school, so we have girls and boys, uh, and just under 40% of the pupils are girls, 
Uh, the number has been growing steadily over the last few years, and our aim is certainly to push it up towards 50% over time. Just under half our pupils are boarders. That's to say they board for at least part of the week. Um, of our 210 boarders, 136 of them board four nights a week. We call that part boarding, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and that's the most popular category. We have weekly boarding and um, a, a number, about 50 full boarders who, who are mainly international students with us. So, so boarding is an important part of, of the college, but as you can tell from the numbers, um, more than half are day pupils, and there's a very good relationship between the two groups. No um, one is, is dominant, uh, and we think that's an important feature of the school. Now, in terms of what we're about, what motivates us is who your son and daughter becomes as a person. And obviously, um, you know, part of that, large part of that is, is fulfilling their academic potential, but we're also interested in uh, giving them um, confidence and values and skills so they can go out into the world and make a positive difference. Now, our academic range is quite wide. Um, we're, we're not really a selective school, we're discerning. We want to uh, make sure that we can support the needs of every child who comes here. Uh, and for some, that means making sure we can stretch them uh, so that they really do fulfill uh, the, the, the potential at the high end. Uh, for others, it's about giving confidence and, and believing in them and, and giving that belief to uh, the, the, you know, the child so that they can achieve at the level they need. And, and for many of our pupils, it's a combination of both support and stretch. And we, we really enjoy that. But it's also outside the classroom um, as well as within, it's about trying to develop their characters, um, building uh, resilience, building good character qualities uh, and confidence so that they're able to stand on their own two feet. And at the heart of our ethos are seven values, which we call flag values, kindness, selflessness, moral courage, industry, initiative, resilience, and integrity. And uh, we bang on about those all the time. I, I talk about them in my assemblies as to, as to the chaplain. Um, it's used at house level. It's used in our, our, our um, selection recruitment process for staff. It, it's used in the process of selecting pupils for positions of responsibility in the sixth form. Th those seven values are an absolute touchstone for our behavior. And we think will uh, stand our, our young people in very good stead as they go out into the world outside. Education is uh, perhaps, you know, at bottom, a, 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 a relational activity. Uh, that relationship between the staff and, and the pupils or the teacher and the pupil as uh, knowledge and understanding are, are transferred. And, and this is a community where relationships are very strong and within which the individual is very important. Uh, I hope that, um, you know, and I know that our students really value that community and we try to be a place where you know, everyone is treated with dignity and respected for who they are, whatever um, their, their, their beliefs and, and so on. So, so those, um, that, that, that value, those values, the relationships uh, are, are, are important features of the school. And then two other things I'd like to highlight before handing back to Celeste uh, are, are the things that students play back to me as the most important uh, things that they enjoy about Pangborn. Uh, they always say the community, but in addition to that, they talk about the opportunities. And uh, most of our activities are collaborative opportunities. We're very strong on team, uh, and um, we have a curriculum which encourages young people to work together. There's also a challenge element to that. So the Duke of Edinburgh's award, the, the CCF, um, are, are important parts of our curriculum. The leadership program uh, called Taking Responsibility Course, and the Lower Six, and the Peer Mentoring Course in the same year, which prepares our students for uh, positions of responsibility and taking responsibility for younger students in their final year. It's a time of real growth for them uh, and they really enjoy that as well. Uh, and we rely on them to a large degree. And then the other thing they, they always talk about are the traditions. And we have some uh, strange traditions to some, uh, the tradition of marching and parading. Think of it as whole school drama uh, where everyone comes together in year nine and above uh, on a sort of weekly basis for, for a few minutes uh, in order to perform. Uh, everyone has a role, uh, everyone has value because they're doing that. And they learn important things about uh, self-discipline, uh, about um, leadership for the sixth form, uh, and, they, and they grow in confidence through performing. So it's a, it's a great tradition. I'm very happy to talk more about that during the question and answer session, if anyone wants to know any more. But um, 
those three things, community, opportunities and traditions are what students uh, play back to me regularly, uh, the things they most enjoy about the school. So I hope that's been helpful as an introduction just to set the scene. And I'm now going to hand back to Celeste, uh, who's going to pass it on to Tom and then to Jenny Jones. Thank you very much, Mr Garnier. Um, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Mr Cheney, who is the head of boarding and also the housemaster of Hesperus Division. Um, he will give you a tour of Hesperus Boarding House and also explain the facilities and activities available to boarders and day pupils. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you all. Um, just to give you a little bit more of an overview of boarding at Pangbourne, um, we're made up of seven boarding houses, um, one junior which holds you seven and eight and then six senior boarding houses, two girls and four boys. Um, within all of our boarding houses, we have a mix of day pupils, part boarders and full boarders, which make up our boarding house families. Um, and that's something that's quite special to us at Pangbourne and we draw upon. Um, just before I go on our tour of Hesperus, I may slip into some Pangbourne dialect in terms of our gun rooms in the girls' boarding house and the boys' boarding houses um, and our galleys. The gun rooms are our social spaces, so the, the common room, the, the lounge, and the galleys are obviously the kitchens. So um, if I do, do mention those, that that is the areas I'm talking about. So we'll now go for our tour around my boarding house, Hesperus. So we're gonna go in via the main door. And as you go in through the main door, you're greeted by Elvis, our house mascot on the wall. And then straight ahead of me is my office um, where the boys will always find me or the assistant. Um, we then head down the corridor into one of our newest rooms, which is our, our day pupil, our, this is a year 10 day pupil room um, that's been specifically built for them. And then down the corridor into our new galley. Now the boys love this space. Um, it, we've had it now for just over a year. Um, it's all mod cons. It's got a cooker, boiling tap, which they love. It leads out onto the debit lawn. Um, so they, they often go out from the galley onto the lawn and will sit on benches out there and have their meals. Um, it's a great social hub for the house. Um, we have breakfasts in here, um, lots of social events in the evenings, um, and it really is a vibrant atmosphere. As we head back down the corridor here, we head towards our gun rooms, the house common room. Um, in here, uh, we've tried to make it as homely as possible for them. They, they're, they're always in here playing table tennis, pool, um, relaxing, chilling out with their friends, and we've got a nice um, sofa and sort of snug area at the far end, which you will see just shortly, um, which has um, a nice big TV, a computer console for them, um, but they'll, they'll often be in here in the evenings, um, watching films, socialising, chatting. We also hold our house assemblies in this room, um, so it is a very well-used room, um, and the boys do love spending their time within it. As we leave the gun room, we're going to head up, up the stairs and we're very lucky in Hesperus. We've got some absolutely fantastic views, which you're about to see over the West Berkshire countryside. Um, none better on a day like this with the lovely sun shining. So we've got some great views for the boys to enjoy. As we head up the stairs here, we're going to head towards our third form area. So this is where we have our third form day pupils. So they have an area to work, um, an area to store their kit um, and to relax. And so this is just for our third form up here. And then we're going to head down to our boarding room. So this is one of our dorms, which will hold six boarders. Um, it's fairly tidy at the moment. They just returned from lockdown when we took the video of the room. So they are still unpacking, but it's a lovely light airy room, great views again. Um, and they certainly do, do enjoy sort of spending time up there. Um, they'll complete their prep up there. They have a work area and, and plenty of storage um, for them at the far end of the room. As we come downstairs, we're on the middle floor here. We're very lucky to have had a brand new bathroom. Um, the boys love this facility. It has underfloor heating, so they're always to be found in there. Um, it's, it's a great upgrade to the house um, and is very much loved by the boys um, and obviously very well used. As we come back out of the bathrooms, we're going to head back upstairs um, to the top floor. So along with our third form on the top floor, we have our upper six leaders of the house. 
Um, so they, they are housed up here and we're going to go and visit our chief. He's in his room, um, diligently working. So this is Hamish, our chief of division. Um, he's working away. This is a sort of typical larger sixth form door, sixth form room, um, an individual room. In the lower years, so forms four and five, boys will tend to be in a sharing dorm um, and the lower sixth and upper sixth will tend to be in cabins on their own. Um, we come back down the stairs here, um, greeted by Elvis again, our house mascot. At either ends of the house um, are the house staff that live in. So I live at one end and the assistant lives at the other. And we're always on call for the boys. Um, it's been fantastic giving you a tour of Hesperus. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you do have any questions, I look forward to answering them at the end. Thank you very much, Mr. Cheney. I'm now going to uh, hand over to Mrs. Jones, who is the house mistress of the St. George division. Good evening. And um, I'd like to show you around St. George, which is the most recently built of all of the divisions. And um, here we're going past my office and sitting in the office that there's me, that's a bit surreal. Um, and so as we head on and we turn right, we're gonna go past our galley, which is, as we said, a shared space. Like a lot of divisions, um, it runs on toast. Um, it's an often used place between um, sports and enrichment activities to go in and grab a slice of toast to sort of keep themselves stocked up. They look after it themselves a lot of the time. They do have to stack the dishwasher, take care of it. This is our gun room, which is a beautifully large space, table tennis table out. We've got a Wii Fit with Just Dance, etc. Movie nights, popcorn and movie, ice cream nights, all those sort of things happen in there. Um, it's used for musters as well. We come back this way. This takes us past the shoe cupboards because we're a shoes off house. Um, oh, not quite. Third form, day room first, which they'd only just moved into about an hour before this was done. So it's a bit of a mess. Large mirror on the right, which is well used on parade days to make sure they're looking very smart and, and dressed appropriately. Um, head on down this corridor, past the matron's room and into, this is our fifth form day room. They'd been back for a day longer, so they were already settled in. And as you can see, bags on the side, storage there for them. Um, they've already settled in, they've got their things out there already working and preparing for exams. It's a lovely light airy room, this one. And it goes through to what I think is one of the nicest features so when we go out here, this is a girls only garden between St. George and Illawarra, the other girls division. And the girls have got space out here. At the moment, there's a table tennis table outside, which isn't in this video. A couple of benches, which are well used for people to work on during the day, especially sixth form during their free lessons. And so that really is a lovely space to be out in. And back through the um, fifth form day room again, space for them to hang things up. Back in the entrance, and this is the stairs. We've got a lift so they can get their things up and down on the first day so they don't have to haul their cases up to the top floor. And as you can see, we're situated right at the end of the parade ground. We've got this beautiful view out over woodlands. Um, the grass out there at the moment, if you came round on a day now, you'd find them out on blankets sitting out in the sunshine when it is nice. This is a third form dorm, so four beds in this. We've got two of these. Nice, light, airy, lovely views over the woods at the back. Um, We've got two of those that are currently used by third and fourth, and um, there's a, a three bed dorm as well. Other than that, our um, rooms are twins or singles. So, but the younger ones all go into this dorm to start with. Uh, this is a sixth form cabin. So this is one of our upper sixth rooms. Um, the girls always decorate their rooms. You will have many fairy lights and various decorations. There's a big thing for plants at the moment. We have lots of house plants being either very well tended for or being killed by the girls at the moment. And again, a lovely view out towards the chapel. And so, um, yeah, sixth form, mostly upper sixth, all in their own room, lower sixth, about half have their own room and about half of them share at the moment. Um, again, view down out. It was a glorious day when they filmed I Can't Guarantee Sunshine Every Day. A slightly smaller single room, so there's Ollie just sitting working there. As you can see, you know, just what you need. Bed, shell, drawers underneath it, wardrobe, nice desk, few shelves to put your things on. We're heading down the other set of stairs, so we've got um, a set of stairs at each end of the building. Again, I live at one end and my AHOM lives at the other end so that we're accessible. Back past that lovely huge mirror, and the shoe cubbies. And um, pretty much that's the end of our tour. So we're heading out and we are right up at the far end of parade ground um, in the school. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.
So following those tours of um, the houses, which are used by boarders and day pupils, um, we're now going to have a look at the academic subjects um, that um, our, our Form 3 students uh, tend to follow and progression into GCSE. And for this, I'm going to hand over to Mr Follett, who's our head of Key Stage 3, who's currently in the chapel. Good evening, and uh, I, I perhaps could just add a footnote to Mrs Jones there, because uh, our daughter left the upper sixth last summer, and she was a, a, a part boarder in uh, St George, and we found it, we only live a mile or so up the road, and we found it virtually impossible to convince her to come home because she was just enjoying um, St George life too much, which we tried not to take as a personal insult, but she had a great time and it was fantastic preparation for university life. She'd been uh, remarkably independent um, since she went off in September. Anyway, that's enough about that. Uh, my job is uh, this evening really to talk about um, academic subjects and uh, my role as head of Key Stage 3. Uh, and that's also known as head of section. So you may see some literature ref which refers to that. Uh, and, and my job is really to have the uh, academic oversight of the progress of the Form 3 pupils, but also Forms 1 and 2, that's Years 7, 8 and 9. And uh, I work very closely with the housemasters and house mistresses um, in the boarding houses uh, to ensure the academic and the pastoral aspects of college life are joined up effectively. Between us, we work with a team of tutors. Uh, so each pupil in year nine will have a, a tutor. Uh, they're generally allocated tutors according to their boarding house. Uh, and they're the daily point of contact along with the, the house masters and house mistresses for most aspects of the pupils' college lives uh, because they see them every day. In terms of study, uh, all pupils in Form 3 study traditional core subjects, English, Math, Science, as well as humanities, geography, history, and RS. Uh, the vast majority will study languages, uh, and that will be one of uh, French, Spanish, or German. And then they will also study art, music, design technology, drama, computing, and they have one uh, lesson of curriculum PE uh, in addition to their games at, um, uh, on, a, on a more than weekly basis in terms of games, so they have one, one lesson of PE. They also have weekly PSHCE lessons and core skills lessons, uh, the latter of which, if you're not familiar with core skills, um, teaches them how to study more effectively, as well as uh, learning useful research and revision skills. And this gives a pretty good progression from uh, prep schools uh, and smaller schools, as well as Dunbar into senior school life. Uh, we typically have five, sometimes six academic classes per year group, uh, in year nine, uh, form three and above. Uh, and they're broadly based on academic ability, uh, but then there is some setting for certain subjects based on the initial testing uh, we do when pupils arrive in September, maths being a really good example. And set changes are not uncommon during the course of the year, and they're reviewed by departmental staff to ensure that pupils are making the best progress uh, for them as individuals. One really important part of my role as head of section, uh, head of Key Stage 3, um, is to bridge the gap between the end of uh, people's time in uh, prep schools or in Dunbar with their first year in uh, the senior school or their senior houses. And uh, I'm responsible for running the GCSE option process in year nine, which starts in January every year. Uh, and my job really is to ensure the pupils, along with their parents, uh, and guidance from the teaching staff, uh, select the right subjects for them as they move into Key Stage 4 and their public exam years. And finally, in addition to this, uh, my role is uh, to work closely with the admissions team, Carol, you're going to hear from later on, uh, to help organise the academic assessment and the activity assessment days, which we, we run for prospective pupils uh, and the academic and co-curricular scholarships process uh, before pupils join in Year 9. So that's a, a quick snapshot from our lovely chapel. Back to you, Celeste. Thank you very much, Mr. Follett. I shall now hand over to uh, Mr. Hewick, our Director of Sports, who is joined, I hope, by Miss Sanders, the uh, Head of Girls Games. Good evening, everyone. And 
Thank you, Cess, for welcoming. So, yeah, as, as Cess said, um, I'm Director of Sport here at Pangbourne, and uh, I oversee and run with my team, and, and Ms. Sanders is one of, one of my team, but we, we oversee a lot of the sport running day to day, and essentially set a lot of the schedule for the pupils across, across the week, across the year, and then sort of some of the uh, cultures and standards we expect from our students across their time at Pangbourne. And now sport is, is a massive part of what we do at Pangbourne. And um, all students take part in four game sessions per week. And this spans across all three terms with students being hugely encouraged to participate throughout this. Now, we, we, we thoroughly believe that we cater to all levels of abilities uh, and foster an environment where students do really enjoy their time representing Pangborn College, whilst at the same time providing specialist accessibility and high level of competition for those on performance pathways or for those who are, who are aspiring to, to, to high levels of performance. A long time, obviously, as I mentioned, that, that lifelong participation and engagement in, in physical activity and sport. Um, now, there is a huge range of sports we offer here, and they're given the opportunity to try all of them at, at some point among, uh, throughout their, their time at the college. And uh, over, as they move through the college, they can choose to take part in, in, in one or two of those more or continue with their broad, uh, their broad experiences there. Now, what we do, we do try and uh, give is this uh, balanced opportunity for competitive fixtures as well, which is which I'll come on to a bit later on. But for, for us, it's it's an important part, but it's an important part we have to get right. Um, we do have three main pupil characteristics within sport that, that we try and develop amongst our students. And the first one is, is we, we expect them to bring a first class attitude um, every time, every day and just want them to do their best. And that, that's all we can really ask of them is just to do their best. We then really encourage them to enjoy the challenge and relish in working towards it with, with essentially what becomes their best friends at school. Um, and that's the big environment amongst teams is, is that your best friend next to you playing and playing your, your sport that you both love. And then we also encourage them to, to lay the legacy for the next Pangbornian and aspire to build it really strong and, and build on that every single year. Now, now across the year, uh, the, the term that the, we, we um, it's a bit more sort of pangborn terminology, and we refer it to the Michaelmas, the Lent, and the summer term. And then we have major sports within, within that. So, in the Michaelmas term, the, the major sport for the boys is rugby, uh, and for the girls, that is hockey. Uh, but there are also some opportunities in, in this term to, to, try, to try rowing as well, have that first experience in that uh, for those that are entering in, in Form 3. As we move into the Lent term after Christmas, uh, rowing for boys and girls becomes a major sport. Um, alongside uh, boys being able to, to take part in hockey and rugby sevens and with the girls being able to take part in netball. Boys football is also um, a part of what we offer um, in the Lent term and that's from uh, form five up, including competitive fixtures against local, uh, against local schools. In the summer term, uh, the boys and the girls have the same uh, choices, so they both can choose uh, between rowing, cricket, tennis or athletics. There is also swimming available to the boys and girls throughout our, um, the summer term. And alongside this as well, and, and uh, as, we, as we try and sort of fit in among, amongst this busy, this busy schedule is, is learning uh, safe gym use uh, and working on health and fitness. I mean, this can happen in, in games, but also as Mr. Follett uh, mentioned about in, the, in their weekly uh, P lessons in, in Key Stage 3, so Form 3 and below. Now, a question I'm often asked uh, by parents is, is, what does a typical games session look like? Um, and, and for me and, and for my team and, and the coaches, we want first thing, high physical activity. Uh, we want kids running around. Um, the game sports, we encourage to be, uh, to be coached through playing the game. Uh, we found this to be an engaging way to do it, but also in terms of skill development, technical, tactical understanding. Um, There'll also be elements of low coach talk, so not much standing around and students just listening, um, no, not much standing in lines, enthusiastic coaches, and also essentially just happy, happy pupils and children. Um, now, as I mentioned about the fixtures, it, 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 it for us is a huge aspect that we, that we really we work really hard to get right when we can have competitive fixtures in a, in a normal time. And I think we're both looking forward to, the, to returning, returning to that. And um, it, it sort of involves sort of getting the right level for every single pupil in, in all the sports and, and essentially aiming to create exciting competitive fixtures, competitive in the best sense of the word, really. Um, and this involves getting the opponent right, uh, adapting the rules and laws where necessary and ensuring the distance we travel away from the college is between 20 and 90 minutes. 
and then ultimately ensuring a really positive experience uh, for all those peoples involved. I think for us, but also for the opposition we're playing against. Um, recently, we've achieved regional and national success and recognition in, in girls hockey, uh, boys rugby, boys rugby sevens, rowing and riding. There's also been some people who achieve highly um, in other at sports that we don't offer in the college at the moment in, outside of this environment. Now, we're really lucky to have some excellent facilities. Uh, at the moment, I'm in, I'm in our gym um, and behind this wall and behind the sides our sports hall. Um, and both these spaces are used, uh, used a lot throughout the week, um, used in PE lessons, used in games. Outside, uh, we have our, our, our fully floodlit AstroTurf which is uh, being relayed and redeveloped this summer, which we're very excited about. We've got three brand new tennis courts or netball courts, four cricket squares, three football pitches, seven rugby pitches. And offside, we have our boat club, which is located on the, on the River Thames, and then also our equestrian centre. For those that are interested in competing at a high level, we have our sports performance programme, which supports students on their, on their sports performance journey. And this encapsulates seven areas of sporting performance. Um, including strength and conditioning, sports psychology, nutrition, physiotherapy, core skill development and parental support. And this is an all round year support. And I would encourage you to get in touch further if you have any questions about this. I mean, I think we're, we're really proud and, and passionate about, about, about sport here at Pangbourne and, and, and passionate about the students doing really well in whatever they choose um, and how, which path they want to do. And, and for us, it, it's just getting the enjoyment right, encouraging the mass amount of participation and having some, the aspiration for, their, for, their, for all the pupils, uh, for them to, to achieve at the right level for them. And I encourage any questions after the end of this. But. Fantastic, thank you very much, Mr. Hewitt. And uh, as, as Mr. Hewitt mentioned, um, both he and Ms. Sanders will be available for the Q&A session at the end. Um, so next up, we have um, a, a pre-recorded video to show you. Um, when we were planning for this event earlier this year, uh, we were hoping to be able to film a group of um, Form 3 students um, once they were back in college um, to show them going about their day. Um, unfortunately, as the Pupils Only came back a couple of weeks ago, and obviously there's been a lot of hard work um, settling in, um, this hasn't been possible. However, we were able to enlist the help of a couple of pupils who um, either live on site or live very close by. Um, so I'm delighted to show you a video that's been put together by Ben, who's in Form 4, and Ella, who's in Form 3. Hello, I'm Ben, and I'm a member of the fourth form here at Pangbourne. This is my division harbinger, where we come from Musters. And I'm, I'm going to be taking you on a quick tour around Pangbourne, showing you some of my favourite things. And I'm Ella. I'm in Form 3. I joined in September. I'm in Illawarra Division, and this is the gum room, what we call the common room. Just out here, we have the parade ground. This is where we come um, to do parade practice on Thursday mornings, and every third Sunday of the month, we have a parade inspected by outside army officers and over here we have the chapel where we have our weekly assemblies and also the parade Sundays are here. And the thing I like about parades is that it teaches teamwork and it gives the other houses uh, opportunity to compete against all the other houses as well. There are six senior boarding houses, two girls and four boys. In the morning, I drop my things off in Illawarra and then head to lessons or go past chapel for an assembly. Let's go and see some classrooms. We're currently in a physics classroom. There are different labs for chemistry, physics and biology. At Pangborn, you can choose to do combined sciences or separate sciences for GCSEs. Each science has separate teachers which help us to understand it really well. Just across this courtyard is art, and now we're in DT, a very popular subject among students because it's practical and you get to design and build your projects. Here, and we also have a classic car rest restoration club. And now we're going to go into the workshop, which is very well resourced, and many students can spend their free time in here making their projects in their free time after school and during breaks and lunch. We've just come into the modern languages block. Downstairs is English and upstairs is French, German and Spanish. I've just made my GCSE options. 
I've chose French, French because it's the most enjoyable lesson, one of the most enjoyable lessons. Here on my right is the sports hall where we do many PE lessons and wet weather training. And now we're just coming into the gym where we, own, we have our own strength and conditioning coach who devises plans and tables for high performing athletes at the school. And it's also open twice a day in, in games time and in the evening for boarders. We're now on the top floor of study, study block in the maths corridor. This is a typical math classroom with whiteboards each end of the classroom. There's a whiteboard at the back so children can have the extra experience of writing on the board. Here is a lovely equation that I have not done. A great feature of life here at Painborn is how much time we get to spend outdoors and this includes CCF and Duke of Edinburgh. Everyone in the third form does bronze and then a great number move on to silver and gold. I'm currently doing my silver which includes volunteering to help the local community and an expedition in the summer. This, is, this includes camping skills, teamwork and navigation and we normally do it somewhere outside of school. For example, silver is done in the New Forest after exams in the summer. The pinnacle of the Duke of Edinburgh Award is the Gold Award and many expeditions take place in the Welsh Mountains or the Lake District and some even go as far as the Falkland Islands. We're currently at the bottom of the quad. Behind me study block and the library, in front of me street where our big performances happen. This is the music block where some IT happens as well. Let's have a look inside. We're now in the Nancy Harding Recital Hall. This is where small performances and some assemblies take place. There are some amazing musicians at the college, but I prefer being on the stage, so let's head over there. Right now we're in Drake Hall. This is where the main performances take place. I really enjoy drama at Pangborn because the teachers are so encouraging, and I'm also really looking forward to being in some productions. Here is Mess Hall where we eat all our meals, and one thing I particularly enjoy about Mess Hall and mealtime is I get to see all my friends who are not normally in my lessons and my favourite meal is Fish and Chip Friday. Now over to Ella to show you inside. I'd have to disagree with Ben. My favourite meal is the homemade pizza. We're currently in Mess Hall where pupils have all their meals. We'd normally hear the sound of pupils chatting while they eat their breakfast, lunch and dinner. Time one sport is a massive part of our lives. We play four times a week, and I play in the first term, rugby, then hockey, then cricket. And others may do rowing in the second and third term. All the coaches here, amazingly supportive, encouraging, and they help all, all levels of ability and take everyone's game to the next level. Here at Pangborn, we also get many fixtures, probably once a week on Saturdays. We play local schools in the area, and the top teams also get the chance to play national and regional level in many different types of tournaments against some of the best schools in the nation. If I had to describe Pangborn in a couple of sentences, I would definitely describe it as a really nice environment with really friendly people. I really enjoy Pangborn because there's so many opportunities, especially with drama, sport, music and art. Thank you for watching this COVID lockdown tour and hopefully you'll be able to join us for a real tour when everything's back to normal. We've come to the end of our mini tour. I'm really looking forward to coming back on campus to see all my friends. I hope to see you in person really soon. Thank you. So well done there to, uh, uh, to <laughs> sorry, Ben and Ella uh, for putting that video together for us. Um, I'm now going, going to hand you back to Mr. Cheney, who is joined by Abby Williamson. Um, Abby has kindly agreed to join us this evening to talk about her experience of Pangborn as a parent. Evening, Abby. Hi, evening. How are you? Very well, thanks. And thank you very much for joining us this evening. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. So I'll, I'll run through a couple of questions with you. Um, Ted, so Teddy's been with us now. He's in fourth fifth fourth form now he's been with us since yeah. year nine um may i ask why did you choose pangborn for him so we are a local family so we've always had pangborn on our radar um we didn't want a boarding school um and we felt that at pangborn there's 
there's absolutely no differentiation between boarders and day pupils. It's very much one whole community. Um, we have, we'd looked at other schools, but our heart kept coming back to Pangbourne. Um, it was very clear. We've got lots of friends who've got children um, at the college, and it was very clear that there was a lot of happy children that we knew, a lot of inspired and nurtured children, and a lot of very happy parents who are friends of ours. Um, and it was becoming, as we looked at other schools, really, really clear to us that Pangborn educates and nurtures your child as an individual for who they are. It's not a one method. Pangborn really sees your child, understands them, nurtures them academically and pastorally in a way that works for them and for you as a wider family, actually. So um, there's, there's so many strengths at Pangborn. Teddy's making the most of all of them at the moment. Brilliant to hear. Um, can you recall when you first started looking at Pangborn for Teddy? Um, so we, I think we started looking at the end of year five. So he attended a local village school first um, and we started looking at the end of year five. I think we were slightly late in the process compared to the norm, but um, Pangborn welcomed our application with open arms and the admission staff went way above and beyond to help us um, we had a great meeting with Mr Garnier which was a real sort of pinpoint memory for us it was it was at that point talking to Mr Garnier and then going around the school that we really felt that gut feeling that people talk about we were like this is absolutely got to be the place. Did, did you have any preconceptions before before Teddy joined about about Pangborn? Um, so like I said previously actually because we had quite a number of friends with children here we had a lot of really positive um preconceptions um a lot of happy kids and happy parents um and actually when we came and viewed the college um we were really impressed with the students and we i think we came a couple of times um and we were shown around by students a, a couple on each occasion who were really wonderful young adults with a fantastic attitude, really happy and clearly really respectful of the college traditions. And obviously they felt a great sense of belonging and happiness in being part of the community. Uh, it's lovely to hear that. Um, yeah. And they are they are great, great individuals or people. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, I, I know Teddy's younger sister is, is joining us. Was that a straightforward decision for you, for, for her to come and join us? Yeah. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, as we looked for Teddy, we were also bearing in mind um, her movements going forward. Um, and she is absolutely bursting to get started in September. So it, it was, it's an absolute obvious because the college provides wonderful opportunities for boys and girls. Um, again, it's very equal and the opportunities available are really strong for boys and girls. That's good. That's great. I, I, I know she, she will love it here. Um, if, yeah, if Teddy's she, can't, she to go literally by. can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, most parents will worry about how their, their child will settle into senior school. Um, what was your experience of how well Teddy settled into life at Hesperus with us? Um, so the lead up, um, we felt so carried by Pangborn in the lead up to him actually starting in September of 2019, it was. Um, the application process, the assessment process, and there were barbecues, get togethers in house. We got to know other parents. We've got to know you, your lovely family, boys in the house. Um, so actually all of this happened beautifully. So Teddy hit the ground running and was just drawn into the Hesperus family beautifully. Now I know conditions have been different recently, but I know that the college has worked really hard to do as much as they can virtually for parents and you know Teddy has just been absolutely absorbed and the strength of connection he feels with his division is really heartwarming it's wonderful he was so happy to get back into um, division and he had he and us as parents have received amazing support from all the staff in division yeah. since he's been there 
I, I think I think that to what, what you mentioned there about Teddy get, loving being back. I think that that is the same for all the boys and girls. Um, yeah. All of our all of our boarding houses have this great family feel to them, um, and I think they they really value that. And they've certainly they've been coming in with smiles. Can't wait to get in at the moment, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, has, has anything surprised you um, since Teddy joined Pangborn? And was there anything you weren't expecting or aware of? Um. So. Gosh, it's it's superseded all of our expectations, really. But but some really lovely little um, things that we weren't expecting were things um, like the HPA program, which I now know I've done my research. It's the High Potential Achievers program. So Teddy was invited to be part of that, which I believe is a program to help um, individuals move forward if they're showing promise. And yes. Teddy was allowed to choose his subject. And I love the fact that he was listened to. He decided that he wanted to um, look into DT, which I know he does under under your supervision, um, because he's got a, a future. He's thinking about an engineering future potentially, um, and he's been really embraced and held in that process, which is really lovely. Um, and that's just one of the things, you know, the clear focus and inspiration he's receiving, sporting wise, is brilliant. Um, he's um, loves rugby. Obviously, that was a bit hindered last year. Um, but he's really, really loving rowing. So he decided to choose rowing for the second two terms and he is really committed to it. And it's because of the inspiration of, of staff that he um, is coached by. He loves that. Yeah, as we see here, the yeah. sports team are fantastic. Um, yeah, engaging, absolutely engaging incredible. Kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing I really want to say, actually, sorry, Tom, at this time <laughs> is he's got what we've really loved seeing is some really amazing connections with teachers. So he's made his uh, GCSE choices. He's in his first year of GCSEs now. He was really helped and guided through that. And he's got some incredible teachers. And I have to say in lockdown, we were overwhelmed. Um, we had, a, he received um, letters in the post from some teachers. Um, we received emails um, saying how well he was doing. You know, there was such, a sort of a nurturing process through the academics during lockdown we were so impressed and I think he felt really happy because of that it was really inspiring for him so thank um, you <laughs> it's our pleasure it's our pleasure um now we've we touched upon the community of of the college and it's something we're known for with, within our within the pupils um yeah. do you think there's a strong sense of community amongst the parents as well um absolutely there is yes um, and like I mentioned previously, we've um, seen friends um, experience this and actually we were just keen to, to get involved as well. And it, it was really obvious to us that from day one, that unlike other schools, um, Pangborn opens its doors to your child, but also to you as a family as well. Um, and you can absolutely be embraced, get involved with the community. I mean, we've worked so many parents and um, we've been to um division suppers um music events sporting events and always feel really welcome and feel part of it and it's just really lovely it's really yeah. embracing it's lovely it, it is it's, it's that that atmosphere and that happy atmosphere that, that yeah. it, it's the pupils home here but it's also the parents it's a home away from home for you to visit and speak yeah. to us on a, on a regular basis so yeah, yeah absolutely you know lines of communication are brilliant um yeah. definitely between the staff and parents um last question your chance to ask me something is there anything you'd like to ask me um I've probably asked you all the questions <laughs> I want to ask you over the course of the last year but but one thing I, I think it's probably worth mentioning and I, Mr Follett um touched on this earlier is there's always floating around this thought of boarding in the sixth form um in our house that we live really close to college um so we've always been on the day side and like I said that's fantastic because there's no division between borders and day it's just yeah. one big family but I have this feeling that coming our way is a request for six form boarding so how do, does that happen often and yeah, how does it work and we, we tend to see it happen a lot and as, as the kid, pupils go through the years in both the girls and the boys houses they, they, they opt to board um I think that's partly due to wanting to be with their friends longer yeah. um it, it can be for some they want to spend some more time um working on prep um, but also the evening activities we offer tend to sort of encourage them in things like comedy nights, magicians, um, div music, um, 
uh, we've done a panel's got talent come diamond yeah. those sort of events they, they love any sort of competition um that brings them all together they enjoy doing so yes we, we do encourage it and they can board in several different ways and um, they can try boarding um for, for up to 10 nights in a year or they can they can become a part boarder um when they go home on a wednesday and a saturday or they can become a weekly boarder so we are very flexible like that and we, we do see the trend is as in, in sick form we have more and more of them boarding um, I actually have every single member of my upper sick is boarding at present in the house um, so it, it, it's a great atmosphere and it's also I think I think they, they really appreciate spending that time together the older they are um, yeah so, yeah I can see that will be happening for us I think <laughs> well, I look forward to it yeah <laughs> so Abby thank you very much for your time this evening and and, and have a lovely You're very evening. welcome Thank you very Thank much. You. You're very welcome. And I'd like to add my thanks. That's really, really helpful. Thank you, Abby. You're welcome. Um, I'm now going to introduce um, a short video about our creative curriculum. Um, the creative arts are really important to us here at Pangbourne. Our heads of department for drama, art, design, technology and music have put together a short video uh, just to introduce their subjects and what you can expect in Form 3. They will also be available to answer your questions in the Q&A session. So I'll now show you this video. Welcome to drama where we like to make interesting mistakes. Basically, we feel as a department that if the environment is safe enough, students will be able to get things wrong and then learn from that experience. We do a variety of things in Form 3 curriculum. Uh, we have a theatre production that all of Form 3 are involved in where they learn lines and perform at the end of Michaelmas term. We also do devising projects. So we look at their creativity, their imagination, uh, work in small groups and, and work on those compromise um, skills, those team building skills. Our facilities include Drake Hall and the Drama Block. We have two theatre spaces, practical theatre spaces, uh, that we use, this drama studio. We also have a theory space. We have two full-time teachers and a full-time theatre technician who also runs the technical club. Our co-curricular offer is on a Friday afternoon and that is Trinity or Technical Club or Showcase. And our Theatre Technician runs the technical club, so if your child is interested in backstage as opposed to on stage, then they can join up and they will then be taught how to operate sound, lighting, set design, set build, etc. Everything to do with backstage really. And those students will then be operating for the Dunbar Michaelmas term production. They're also encouraged and welcomed to take part and help out backstage with the college production. If your child wants to do Trinity, we offer Trinity, which is akin to Lambda. That is from grades one through to eight. And we do that on Friday afternoon in activities. Um, if they would prefer not to do an exam, but still want to be involved with drama, then we do that as well. We have a showcase in the summer term and so we work towards that over the year, creating little pieces, scripted bits, just a collection of them really, that we then showcase in the summer term. And also we show the Trinity pieces there as well, if the students want to do that. Uh, we have a college production, which happens every February, and that is open to absolutely everybody in the college. So I send out a, a, an audition uh, request and anybody in the college is allowed to turn up and audition. We have Form 3 and Lower 6 scholarships and we actively encourage those students to take part in the college production, um, complete their Trinity exams. We also meet on a half-termly basis, so any ideas or input that they want for the drama department, they can explain to us, they can talk us through, because they usually have better ideas than I do. Um, we also, when the world goes back to normal, have theatre trips where they have free tickets on every trip, theatre trip we take. Hello and welcome to ARP. Uh, my name's Ian Young and I'm Head of Art here at Pangbourne College. Just wanted to tell you a little bit about the ethos of the department and what we try to do. 
For those entering in Form 3, we hope to provide a genuinely creative experience. For us, at the core of all creative activity is an individual. And that's really, for us, the most important part of what we do. I believe that we should teach art as close as we can, individually. Yes, there are skills that must be learned and shared and so forth, but it's the individual's pathway or journey through their subject that's most important to me. If we can, we teach individually, where each pupil is tutored and their ideas discussed and nurtured. We try to develop what each one of them is more interested in most. At the moment, you can probably see a Form 4 group behind me, uh, and each of those is currently developing an individual project that they will work through to GCSE. In fact, actually, to discuss GCSE options might not be a bad idea. Uh, we offer the AQA specification, and one of the joys of that specification is just how much flexibility it allows us. It allows people to explore all manner of different media, whether they're interested in print or photography, traditional oil paint, uh, or any other kind of painting, installation work, and a whole variety of mixed media, three-dimensional work, and nearly anything else that they can think of. For us, that's a crucial freedom. If people are going to develop their own artistic voice, the ability to choose and select a pathway that suits them is at the core of what we do. For us, the, the advantage of having an art block like this is that we really do have good facilities. The spaces are lovely and, as you can see, open and airy and light. We're able to offer access to a very broad range of materials, and I guess that perhaps somewhat fortunately these days, we're quite well funded and resourced. That ability to make people's ideas come true, give them form and reality, is crucial for us. Again, if I can say yes to somebody when they come up with a project, if I can help them nurture and develop that idea, then the resources are here to support them. Uh, not only do we have banks of computers, printing presses, dark rooms, shoot spaces, project rooms, we also have great facilities in terms of constructing sculpture and three-dimensional work. Again, the creativity of the individual is really what limits people, what people can do here, and it's their ability to think of ideas that we hope to give the opportunity to develop. Welcome to Design Technology, a very busy and thriving department. As you can see behind me, we have a large open plan workshop with many facilities in both timber and metalwork. In third form, you get to use many different disciplines, including timbers, metals, CAD work and textiles. In DT, we are known for giving you something different to try, and we have a very busy and thriving GCC group growing every day. One of our co-curricular offers is rebuilding a Bond Equip. Our classic car club is very popular with third form. Uh, they get to rebuild and work on the mechanics of a car. Now, third form projects, if I take you over here, <laughs> third form projects can be very varied in their structure. Here out here, we have many different types of projects, both GCC and A-level. In third form, uh, we have made previous projects before, including sweet dispensers, tea lights, skateboards and architectural models. The key is that we want to give third form the opportunity to try different mediums before uh, committing to GCC. One of our GCC options in DT is textiles. As we can see, we've got a very well uh, furnished textiles department with many sewing machines and sublimation printer. Textiles is ever growing and very uh, popular with girls and boys in the school. Hello, my name is Chris McDade, I'm Director of Music here at Pangbourne College and I'm delighted to welcome you to this virtual tour of our music school. The music school that we are standing in the main foyer here was opened in 2012 and it was funded by a parent, a former parent of the college and he was a benefactor of this magnificent building that is part of our communication centre. You might be able to hear uh, behind me a, a few sounds of what we might expect in our music school during the normal working day. So let me take you on a little tour and I'll show you some of the places and you can see some of our students at work. So here we have our recital hall. This is our main concert venue apart from the chapel which we also use for some concerts during the year. And you'll see in here we can have a, an audience of 74 people at any one time and one of our magnificent Steinway Grand Pianos. We are a Steinway school, which means that we have that status on all the major pianos that we have in the college for 
Piano lessons and for concerts are Steinway Grand Pianos and we're very, very privileged to be a part of that magnificent foundation that is Steinway. So we're now on the bottom corridor of the music school, which is where the majority of our one-to-one -one instrumental lessons take place. Behind me you could probably hear the drum kit, so this is what we call our noisy end of the music school. It's noisy all the time, but this is the noisy end. And some of the photographs you'll see on my right-hand side as we pan across will show you pictures of the marching band, and we're looking forward very much to be able to getting back to putting this ensemble out in public again. They're carrying on rehearsing and practicing, but of course very much in a different format that we're used to. The young man here that you will hear playing the drums is Andrew. He's one of our upper six musicians, A-level student. Just completed his A-level drum recital and is going off to university in September to study maths. But a fantastic drummer and a very, very good singer. So we're now upstairs in the music school and we're in our main teaching classroom. So all the lessons that we would teach for Key Stage 3, year 7, 8 and 9 will take place in here. We also use this room for teaching GCSE and some A-level classes, depending on what particular activity we're doing within their exam courses. All the students who will join us then in the third form will come into our curriculum at Key Stage 3, the final year of Key Stage 3. Within that curriculum, we will do quite a lot of work on Britpop, we will do composition of pop songs, we will look at chord patterns and sequences, we will develop our keyboard skills, we will develop our awareness and understanding of a wide range of different styles of music, all in preparation for finishing off the key stage and then with a view to choosing the subject at GCSE. Just in terms of the co-curricular as I come to the end of my music section, um, it's worth pointing out that we have a whole range of different activities available to our students, ranging from Composition Club and using the Max, to the marching band, to a concert band, to brass ensembles, smaller ensembles, to a college choir and our sixth form chamber choir. Also with that, the houses, or the divisions as we call them at Pangbourne, will also take part in what they call Divs Music, and that will be coming up very, very soon, where all the houses learn a house song, which they nicely call the House Shout, they also put together a small ensemble, depending on the musical skills in their division, and then they also do a solo item as well. That takes place normally in the autumn term, and that's a very, very big musical event. So music is very important to Pangbourne. It's central to what we do. A lot of our students take part in the music, and for them, it's about fun, it's about engagement, and it's about working as part of a musical team. I very much hope we look forward to meeting your child here very soon. So as I say, those heads of department will be available for the Q&A session, uh, which is coming up um, after we've spoken with Mrs. Pointer, who's going to be interviewing a couple of our um, Form 4 pupils. Um, she'll then be followed by Mrs. Bailey talking about the admissions process, and then we'll move on to the Q&A session. So I'm um, delighted to introduce you to Mrs. Pointer, who's currently in our library. And we are being joined by two pupils, um, Max and Alice. Lovely, thank you, and welcome to our library, everybody. Um, I am the head of Key Stage 4, so another head of section. You met Mr Follett earlier, who is responsible for Key Stage 3, um, and I take over looking after the pupils as they get into um, Form 4 and Form 5 and start doing their GCSE courses. Um, I'm very grateful to Max and Alice, who have joined us today and are going to answer a few questions um, about their life at Pangbourne and how they find the experience, which hopefully will be useful for you to find a little bit more about what it's like as a pupil. Um, so I'm going to start off with Alice. Um, Alice, can you tell me a little bit more about Pangbourne from a pupil's perspective and why you chose to come here? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually heard about it from a friend. Um, we were sort of we were looking around for schools and my friend was like, oh my gosh, go to Pangbourne. It's an amazing school. So I thought nothing of it. I came. <laughs> I came. I joined in Dunbar and Dunbar was an amazing experience. It was so fun. It was like a little family down there. Um, then I moved into third form and it just, I didn't think Pinewood could get any better, but it did. The house community is something I'd never experienced before. And it is one of the nicest feelings knowing that you're part of something bigger. Um, I love all the divisional competitions because you're competing against your friends. It's, it's amazing. And I just, 
Pangbourne, the community in Pangbourne is so important and you can and you can see that with walking around school and seeing everyone with their friends and it's just it's something I love about Pangbourne it's the Pangbourne community it's just it's amazing. That's that's so lovely to hear and I think echoes lots of the things that we've been been trying to say tonight so thank you for that that's really really fantastic to hear. Um, so Alice just suggested there and and told us that she joined in Dunbar and Max actually didn't join the school until form three so Max can you tell me a little bit what uh, what it was like for you joining the school later on when you joined Pangborn in form three? Well yeah it was to be honest it was really it was very different compared to my my prep school it was much bigger Pangborn and as I was a day pupil before I then became a boarder but I mean I met everyone I mean everyone and it just felt so nice and after a while you just get used to it and you change you adapt and then it becomes just a second nature and everyone is just so nice it, just, it, was, it was a really nice experience to like get used to. Wonderful, thank you, Max. Um, so Alice has previously again suggested that she is a day pupil. So Alice, can you tell me what it's like for you as a day pupil at Pangborn and what you think makes Pangborn different to other schools? Yeah, so um, I'm gonna say something that might not be very popular here, but we were also looking at Bradfield. But the reason that we picked Bradfield, uh, Pangborn, sorry, over Bradfield <laughs> is because it, I really want, my sibling went to boarding school and I really wanted to go to a day school. And I, we walked around Pangborn and we saw that just because you're a day pupil, it does not mean that you're seen as anything less. It's really nice. You're all seen as sort of the day pupils mixed with the boarders and the boarders mixed with the day pupils. And I feel if I went to another school where boarding was a little bit more like another school then that wouldn't be the same and I just love how you you mix with everyone boarders mix with day pupils and I just it's something I love about Pangborn is the boarders and the day pupils mix and I feel just so happy that I've been able to find a school where that's possible so brilliant thank you Alice um so Max as a boarder you said you just said there that you started the day pupil and then you decided to board what's life like in division can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah um it's it's noisy but it's <laughs> it's really fun um but as Alice said there is this really great like combination of day pupils and boarders but at night and like when you're in the evening is a really different experience and as I think you get like closer and you become closer with the people in your house that you are actually like living with. And it's like this car, it's this chain, like this, that all the cogs turn and you all just work together. You all get on with like life in house. But also I struggled with boarding and I was homesick and some sick form like really helped me. They made me just like, enjoy it they helped me to um really fit in with everyone and it was really really nice to have that help and it's just really great that's that's fantastic to hear thank you max um so one last question for you both to to try and give a little bit more understanding of what life is like as a as a pupil at pangborn alice perhaps i could start with you what's your best memory of being at pangborn so far oh my gosh oh um I have to say, being part of that, um, of the hockey tournament where we made it to the County Cup at Bradfield, then the County Championships at um, St Mary's Ascot, and then going further on to compete at, I think it was the regional level, I had never been so proud to be part of a hockey team and never been so proud to call myself part of Team Bangborn because we'd, we'd worked so hard, all of our coaches, I mean, the coaches were amazing they, they got us to where we were and I could not it's just it, it was unspeakable sort of we 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 finished at St Mary's Ascot and we were like we're going to regionals oh my god I can't believe this and it was just so lovely to be part of that team and to be part of something just I it, words cannot describe how proud I was to call myself a Penguin student at that time I was just oh words cannot describe it 
So Wonderful. What an amazing memory to have. Let's hope there'll be lots more of those successful competitions to come whilst you're at school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Max, what about you? What would you say is your best memory so far at Pangborn? Yeah. Hands down, it has to be my first ever muster. Um, I walked in there being a nervous third form and I saw all these older boys walk in behind me and it was just so great. They were all talking and then they all looked at our year and they just really included us. They started talking with us and it was just great to see this this community and I really enjoyed it to... Um, understand that there were just like so many people there but everyone just included you it was great thank you thank you both so much um for for spending the time with us this evening and taking a time out of your your busy evenings i appreciate it very very much and it's lovely to hear your thoughts on what life is like at pangborn thank you both and i shall hand back to celeste thank you Thank you very much. And I'd like to add my thanks again to Alice and Max. It was really lovely to hear from you both. Thank you. Um, so before we go to the Q&A session, I will now um, hand over to um, Mrs Bailey, who is our head of admissions, who is going to briefly talk you through the admissions process and what you might want to do uh, following this evening's event. Thank you, Celeste. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, most of our audience this evening have children currently in year four or maybe year five and this is a perfect time to start looking and considering options for your child's senior school. An event such as this may be your first step into exploring what options are available to you or you may be a little bit further into the process and have narrowed your search. Whatever your circumstances and where you are in your search, I hope to give you an insight into the admissions process at Pangborn. Pangborn is one of the most well-established independent co-ed schools in the area, having moved to co-ed from boys only back in 1996. This means we have many years of experience and expertise in delivering a balanced and well-rounded education to both boys and girls. The college is currently made up of around 60% boys and 40% girls, so this does sort of vary year on year, with approximately 460 pupils from the age of 11 through to 18. Children here benefit hugely from the small class sizes where we can do what Pangborn does best incredibly well, which is to nurture the individual. We're here this evening to focus on entry at Form 3 or Year 9, which is the largest entry point at Pangborn, where we anticipate in the region of 60 children joining our current pupils of transition through from Form 2, giving a year group of around 90 pupils. We also have entry points at Form 1 or Year 7 and 6th Form. Again, we're happy to consider entry uh, points into other year groups if places are available. Pangborn is not academically selective school, which allows us to cater for a wide and diverse range of abilities, offering those pupils that may need it more support, or for some pupils, extension programs, as you heard Mrs. Williamson mention, the High Potential Achievers program. We also offer a number of different events and visits designed to give you the opportunity to get to know Pangborn, to get a sense of whether your child would be happy here. And as the restrictions begin to ease, we will offer more opportunities, opportunities for you to visit in person. Details of visit options will be made available on our website. We will also contact you directly with invitations to events that are most relevant to you. The next being I'm very happy to announce is our open weekend on the 25th and 26th of April, which is aimed at families considering entry in 2024 or earlier. You will receive an email tomorrow with details on how to book on to that event if you would like to. At the point you decide you wish to make an application, you will need to formally register your child, which you can do at any time and very easily by completing our online registration form. Your child should be registered by the end of September of the year that they're in year six. We've got four elements to our selection process. So after registering, your child will be required to take the ISEB pretest, which is a computer-based taste test in English, mathematics and reasoning skills. The test will be taken in the autumn term of their year six and typically will be taken at their current prep school. The tests are designed to measure potential rather than specific knowledge at a given time. They are standardized to your child's age and they're adaptive tests, 
that will level to your child's performance. The questions are in a multiple choice format. Although the test element of the process tends to focus quite largely in most application, applicants' minds, our decision is not weighted towards the test. Our approach is more holistic and it's the whole of the process that's important. We seek a comfort, confidential reference from your child's school together with their latest school reports. Both help us in creating a fuller picture of who your child is, more so than what they can do. Finally, you will have heard mention from uh, Mr. Follett, we invite children, applicants, to attend our activities-based assessment, which usually takes place in January. We very deliberately do not look at the pre-test data before this activities event, so as not to prejudge based on academic performance prior to getting the opportunity to seeing your child's interactions in this group format. Candidates are arranged in groups and undertake team building type activities. The groups are constructed so they have the opportunity to work with other children that they may not know and perform tasks that they wouldn't typically be used to doing in their own school. It's a fun day where our staff will observe and assess their interactions with each other. And the children get the opportunity to spend some more time at Pangborn. It shouldn't and typically doesn't feel like an assessment to them. They tend to get stuck in and immerse themselves in the challenges of building towers out of marshmallows, for example. We want to make sure that we are the right fit for your child and they will be happy in the community environment that Pangborn is. It thrives on positive in interactions with each other. Once the assessment process is complete, we will notify parents or guardians with offers of places, which will need to be formally accepted. Our hope at that stage is that places are accepted. An offer of a place means that we've seen that match between Pangborn and your child, and we believe they will enjoy and thrive here. We then have a series of induction events that will engage your child in the run up to them starting at Pangborn. So that transition to senior school is really positive. And by the time they start at Pangborn, they really are starting to feel part, like part of the community. On occasions, for whatever reason, families may come to the process a little bit later and we can accommodate late applications if we have spaces available. Or we may assess for a wait list place. If you're in this situation, please contact the admissions team and we can discuss your particular circumstances further. Our key date summary is available on our website together with further information about each step of the process. But please do get in touch with the, with the admissions office if you have any questions. We are here to help and guide you and look forward to talking with you. Thank you very much. So back to you, Celeste, now, I think, to start the Q&A session. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bailey. Um, so we have had a few questions come in. Um, a few of those have been answered. Um, thank you very much to the team for, for getting on to those. Um, I'd like to start with a couple of questions that were emailed in, um, and I'm going to direct these to um, uh, our deputy um, head teacher of academics, um, uh, sorry, um, Mrs. Greenwood, um, who hopefully is with us. Um, the first question was, um, what is the process for feeding back to parents on pupils' progress and how frequently is this received? Thank you, Celeste. Um, this is really important. As you'll have heard earlier on, we really like to keep communication lines very open with our parents and make sure that everybody is aware of, of where their child is at that time. So we run basically a two weekly grading process. So every two weeks, sometimes three weeks, but we aim for two weeks, parents will receive a grade card, which gives an effort and an attainment grade for their child. Um, over the previous two weeks. Um, at that point, then the parents are invited to get in touch with their child's tutor if they'd like to discuss this further, find any more details. The tutor will also sit down with each individual pupil and discuss their grades and ask them to set themselves targets to help them move forward so that they can improve in their performance as they move on. Um, so I, I hope that answers that question. If there are obviously any other major problems, we would clearly get in touch with the parents and, and have a discussion about that. So I should also say that the attainment grade, particularly as they move on and go into the, the GCSE years and the A-level years, is very much individualised towards a child's individual performance and their, their aspirations and our expectations. 
So it's not a generic grading system. It reflects whether they are on track to meet their own individual potential in those subjects. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and while, while we have you, um, the next question relates to whether children attend school on Saturdays and whether that's for academic studies or sports or both. So we took the decision um, just over a year ago, although it does seem a lot longer given the year that we've just had, to take lessons away from a Saturday morning and to keep that time for sport and activities. So we moved our Saturday morning lessons into the week and we teach those during the week as part of our, our timetable there. We then um, ask school students to come to school on a Saturday for their sporting commitments. So although we would like them to be in school, um, they don't have to do any academic lessons at that time. We find that helps parents to negotiate what they're doing and also to manage to see their children play in their sports matches, etc. And then they can have a little bit more time with them at home over the weekend as well. So that's why we've taken the decision just to have sport on a Saturday. Super. Uh, and before I let you go at this point, um, another question has come in um, asking about the average class sizes. So the class sizes um, very much vary, I have to say. We would say we have a maximum class size of 20 up to GCSE and then probably at about 15 in the sixth form. But they're really not all that size at all. Sometimes um, the, the top sets may have more pupils in them. And then as you move down in a stream subject, the, the lower sets may have fewer pupils so that we can give them much more individualized help in there. The option subjects also vary depending on different years and how many blocks it's on offer in. But we do cap at 20, so it wouldn't go above that. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, and for the sports team, um, I do have a number of sports related questions to hand over to you. Um, so uh, first of all, can girls play football? Um, so girls have the opportunity to play football once a week. And they also have the opportunity to play rugby as well. Um, so this is something that has been brought in this year and the girls have really, really enjoyed it. So we are definitely gonna carry that on next year. Fantastic. Um, and then the next one uh, for the sports team is, um, again, to do with football. Um, my son is very big on football. When is the earliest time that you can play? Yeah, so, so we, we run um, football for uh, Dunbar in year seven and eight. So they, they, they'll take part in the full, full two years of, of, of competitive sports within football. Uh, and then in, in form three and form four, uh, they, they have opportunities to take part in football uh, once a week in, in the Michaelmas term, but no competitive fixtures start until the fifth form for them. And they can choose it then as a major sport. We like to give them, um, and that runs as a major sport in the Lent term, alongside boys hockey. We like to give them a really strong introduction into, in, into hockey um, before they make that choice. And, and we found that often um, boys sometimes have varied experiences playing hockey and like to give them that opportunity to do it for a couple of years. And then they're in, in an informed decision when, when they do get to that slightly older position rather than choosing football and not having any experience or opportunity to try hockey at all. Thank you. And a related question is, is there competitive football before Form 5? Um, not externally, um, so we'll, we'll run inter-house divisional sport competitions for football, um, but at the moment, um, no. Okay, um, next question. Are sports coaches specialists or are they more general across all sports? A bit of both really. Um, it, it sort of depends on, on, we have a lot of teaching staff who will, who will, who will take co-curricular, take teams. In some teams, we'll have some ex, across the whole school, we have some excellent coaches. And, and in some sports, we'll use external coaches to also come in uh, who, are, who are super specialists um, in, in their area. And this, you know, to talk about at the moment, what? So at the moment, we have got a, a GB player who's in the development programme, um, Holly Hunt, who's coming to coach. And she's worked with our girls for the three weeks since we've been back. And they have absolutely loved it. So we do have those expertise coming in. But it, we also think it's really important to have those classroom teachers also out coaching sport um, for the afternoons. Yeah, I think that build, we find it builds a really nice relationship between pupil and student, really, and, and they see them in a completely different environment. Um, and I think that for us is part of the sort of holistic, I know it's been talked about a lot, the holistic 
sort of involvement of what this team angle <laughs> behind us, but that, that is essentially well, a big part of it. Fantastic. Um, next one for you. Is swimming only during the summer term? Um, so the swimming pool was refurbished in 2018 and it is an outdoor pool. So we use it for our third form in the Michaelmas term and they have the opportunity in their PE lessons to go in there. And then in the summer term, because it's outdoors, um, they then have the whole of the summer term where they can go in there. There's also um, options when they can pick it and um, boarders love using it in the evening. So it's definitely a social hub in the evenings for the boarders. I mean, it is heated, so they're not jumping into a uh, sort of just air temperature pool. So we do heat it to a certain level, which is, which is great. Um, and, and there are times throughout the year where, where some, te some sports teams use it for recovery methods when it's not impeding on someone else's sort of participation within swimming. Um, so, yeah, we're a bit stuck with being outdoors, unfortunately. <laughs> nice. It's a lovely pool. It's nice when the sun's up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this next question I'm going to direct to Mr Garnier. Um, uh, somebody has asked whether there's a scout group in the school. Um, there isn't, but I think Mr Garnier would be very happy to talk about the alternative options. Yeah, yes, that's right. There isn't a scout group, but uh, as you've heard, that the Duke of Edinburgh Awards scheme is, is very strong, uh, and every pupil who joins Year 9, Form 3, will take part in that uh, and complete their, complete their bronze awards by the end of uh, form three. And then we, um, th th then in year, year 10, that's form four, uh, they will compulsorily take part in the combined cadet force for a year. This is, both of these are one afternoon a week. Um, and, and then at the end of form four can make a decision about whether they carry on with that. Uh, in, in form five, year 11, um, then they have the option to choose either between CCF or uh, to continue with the Duke of Edinburgh Silver Award or indeed both, they can do both. Um, and then in the sixth form, we encourage uh, as many as possible to do the gold award. So typically proportion of lower six who will do the gold award is about a third. Um, in in um, form five, it's half to sort of 65, 70% of um, form, form five who will do the silver award and it's 100% uh, in um, form three for, for the bronze award. But there isn't actually a scout group as such. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, Perhaps if I could stay with you, Mr. Garnier, uh, there's a question um, with regard to how many pupils go on to join the armed forces after leaving Pambourne, and are any of the staff ex-forces? So, yes, thank you. An understandable question. I mean, we, we, we were set up as a school by um, a shipping company. It's a merchant navy foundation rather than a military one, um, founded during wartime, First World War. So that's where the, the, the military uniform came in and, and, and the links. And I guess it was, you know, up until 1969, when the, when the school changed its purpose, quite a number did go off into either the Royal Navy or, or to the other services. Um, now it's, it's very, very different. So we have this ceremonial tradition, as I say, whole school drama, but uh, it's a relatively small, I mean, a tiny proportion, maybe, maybe three or four pupils a year out of a year group of, of typically 75 in the upper sixth who are thinking about going into the uniformed services, and I'd include the police in that. So a, a very, very small proportion, no more, frankly, than any other school. Uh, and one could argue that, you know, having, having worn the uniform and, and, and marched around a bit, that they'd worn the T-shirt and made a decision not to, not to do it. Um, so so it's, it's a small proportion. We don't put any pressure on them to think about careers, you know, uniform careers. Um, it, it's just one of a number of options that are covered within the careers programme. Um, I, I think uh, just to, to take the, the second question and, and also just to extend it a bit, um, the number of families who have had a service background is probably, this is an estimate, around 10%. Um, and, and in the school, it's only about 5% of children who come from actively serving um, service families. So we're talking 20 pupils in the school as a maximum. Would, would have children who are actually serving in the forces. So again, it's a small proportion. Uh, on, the, on the staff, uh, I, I think the number's dwindling, actually, I'm, I'm one of them. Uh, there are a few staff who've had uh, a, a short, short career in, in the, uh, the services, but it's, it's not a requirement to teach you by any means. Um, I, I'm off the top of my head, I think I can think of about three. Fantastic, thank you very much. We just have one question left. Um, so I'll need to direct this back to our sports team. Uh, and the question is, do we offer any martial arts? Um, not, not at the moment. I think 
you'd see that um, we have a pretty busy schedule at Pangborn and, and I think if, if to add something in, something's got to come out. And I think it's, it's a fine balance. And I think like a number of these um, extra sort of activities and sports, um, if there's a big enough demand, then, then it's something that we, we look at and we explore. But at the moment, we, we don't have any, any, any formal martial arts in our, in our programme. I mean, we sometimes we we'll sometimes bring in some coaches who will do specific things with with rugby teams. So from a martial arts type background and some of those techniques, but the sort of the category of, of martial arts of the sport, no, it's not run. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so that's it for, for the questions. So that's, so that's um, if I could just jump in there uh, with with a uh, sort of an expansion of that answer. Um, clearly, when when I was looking at schools. Um, that they vary, as I said at the beginning, greatly in terms of size uh, and uh, what's in their curriculum. And generally speaking, the larger the school, the greater the range of opportunities. Uh, and the smaller the school, the more distinctive they're offering. And uh, you know, small schools have to cut their cloth. And we cut our cloth according to uh, mainly team activities. We don't have many individual activities. And, and I think probably martial arts might fit into that category. Um, so we focus on a high level of participation in a number of team activities. Now, obviously, uh, activities like music uh, and drama also, uh, they have their ensembles, but they also have the opportunity for individuals to um, develop their skill. Um, and uh, as Mr. Hewick said earlier, um, the, the, the sports um, programme for, for those who are elite players, you know, exists to take them on. But... Um, we, we, we have to cut our cloth and we tend to focus on, on collaborative activity rather than individual ones. So that's just a general point about how we approach the co-curricular. Wonderful. Um, no further questions have come forward. So um, I think uh, I'd like in that case to say thank you very, very much indeed to all of the staff members that have taken part in this evening's event. And a special, special thanks to those pupils and to Mrs. Williamson, who's kindly joined us uh, this evening to talk about her perspective as a parent. Um, just before we finish up, I would like to ask our attendees to please complete the feedback form, which should pop up on your screen um, as you leave the event. Um, it will also be on the email that you'll receive from the admissions team tomorrow. Um, so once again, thank you everybody uh, for joining us this evening and we look forward to um, seeing you on site as soon as we can. Thank you.